and welcome to New Faith Baptist Church International's Bible study during COVID-19 in 2021. We have taken the journey through Genesis. We started at the beginning of COVID, and here we are um, now making the transition into Exodus. We added something in, I think it was Psalms 105, <laughs> just because we wanted to kind of summarize Joseph's story, give another perspective on Joseph. Um, because he is an important character in the book of Genesis and in the life of the Israelites. It was Joseph, the character, the man Joseph, that God used to establish them to become the nation that they are. Um, although we know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the forefathers. Um, we just wanted you to get that perspective that God was testing Joseph, um, because we often talk about the, the betrayal of the brothers, we talk about the prison, we talk about the pit, we talk about the coat, <laughs> we talk about the dream, but we don't ever talk about the testing of his heart. And, and that is one thing that I wanted to be clear because I think that's a missing component in the story of Joseph when it's shared. And so, and we want to pass the heart test, amen. We want to pass the heart test of the most high God. And so I am Reverend Dr. Alexis Felder, first lady and minister of ministry operations here at New Faith Baptist Church International. We are one church on two continents and three countries with 22 locations, um, living and giving to the glory of God. And so we are excited to have you join us today. The others will introduce themselves. Reverend Greg Powell, minister of pastoral care. Reverend Sellers Vines, minister of justice. Hallelujah. So we are on Exodus 1. So I pray that you will take Genesis. And if you've ever wanted to start from cover to cover, we're making our way. So mm -hmm. if you take Genesis 1, re, um, listen to our Bible study, then read it. It will give you the insight and understanding that you need. I think you'll have a great time because we tried, as we started this journey, we were very lighthearted so that um, we knew a lot of people were struggling with COVID, but now we're going to get deeper and a lot bit more serious um, with the text. So journey with us. We're not exhausting the text by no means, but we definitely are seeking to bring illumination. Amen. So the Lord is faithful. I'm sorry. I got music playing. I got music playing. So far. <laughs> Pardon? Can't exhaust the inexhaustible. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a song called Kadosh. So let's go. We cannot exhaust the inexhaustible. Amen. So yeah, Exodus yeah. 1, Reverend Powell is the reader. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 1. There, these are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all. Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died, but the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is about to get tight. <laughs> Real sticky, right? Because you have this great, this great leader, Joseph, their brother, who's a, a foreigner to the land, and he has the answer to their problems, the solution to their, um, their survival. Mm -hmm. And now he is deceased. Mm -hmm. All of his brothers are deceased. And now you're about to go into the next generation. And it's important that we are off, we, we are, we're often generational in our thinking, because if we don't, if we're not generational in our thinking, then a generation will lose what they need. And this is what we're about to see <laughs> as we study this text. So the first thing we see, we go back to what, 430 years? The story of the Exodus began um, with, uh, with Genesis mm -hmm. and a large family in a, in a particular place. And now they have migrated to Egypt and the generation that brought them there is no longer there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, just uh, in, in, in terms of background, um, gen general historical background, um, first of all, it's important to, to, again, as all scripture, to understand from the 21st century perspective that there was no CNN, there was no, you know, no on-site reporters, uh, you know, the history was understood differently um, in how people told its story. Um, the, the, the ancient world, the story was told in a mix of historical memory uh, and again, these are oral traditions that are passed down um, and then early, very early written into 
very early written tra traditions and then uh, in ancient times still beginning to be codified into what we will come to us as uh, as the Torah and then eventually as scripture as the Bible um, and so so th there's a lot of things going on that that filters into how the story is told uh, the end of the Bronze Age which is Bronze Age which is when uh, much of this is is um, is is it's not when it's being written but is what what has been written is referring to that has come down to them from this ancient, even for them in the in the eighth and ninth centuries, this is ancient history. And this is ancient, uh, 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 you know, this is the story, you know, the origin story, you know, our beginnings. The roots. So, the the roots, roots, right, right the, the roots. roots, you know. Um, and so um, at the end of the Bronze Age is a period of glow, of worldly, if you will, of, of the world as they knew it, dislocation. Um, you had uh, uh, the, the end of empires that it had an intricate, trade and 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 political alliances um that suddenly are just you know the Assyrian empire the the uh excuse me the, the uh, uh babylonians the um uh, syrians the the egyptians these things are the hittites uh these things are these 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 uh um long stable civilizations are in in flux um you had climat climactic issues a uh, climate change uh, this one natural <laughs> you know not that you know they didn't have combustible engines so it's a different dynamic but still the result is the same you had yet yeah, a 300 year drought in in much of this part of the region if you could imagine a 300 year drought yeah, yeah, that yeah. means that you got no time to recover <laughs> right, and so people are being dislocated. People are moving, are, are are migrating, are disrupting the countries that they come into. And we're not talking about a few, you know, a, a thousand Haitians on the border of the most wealthy country in the world. Uh, we're talking about major uh, migrations of, of of humanity. And so into Egypt, you got the and into the this region, you got all these folks coming in. You got the the this, uh, people coming in from Canaan into Egypt. You got because Egypt at that point is the breadbasket of the world. You know, so 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 the point is that what the background for the story of Joseph and how they go, you know, their famine and and they go into Egypt and they go into Egypt, they're seven, then Egypt receives them. This is a, a period of great dislocation in Egypt as well. Uh, you had uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 what they what they in Egyptian propaganda and history are uh, referred to as the sea peoples, which, uh, you know, that was just a general term. They come in and they eventually invade. And it's a, it's again, it's an evasion that's made possible by the dislocation by all these folk migrating into Egypt um, and, and, and disrupting the politics there. They take over <laughs> for a minute. And hence the background of the, the Pharaoh that knew Joseph versus the Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph. Because when we come into the era of Exodus, and again, this is memory as it comes down, um, the, the, the Pharaoh that didn't know J Joseph was an Egyptian Pharaoh. <laughs> you know, probably, perhaps, the, the somewhere in the 18th dynasty because they referred to Ramses, right? 18th and 19th dynasties. And so they come and they take back the power. Uh, to, to African hands, and they have a whole nother perspective of this Hebrew group, which is part of a larger uh, immigration dynamic, if you will, and, and political dynamic of the Semitic groups in this country that have disrupted their whole thing. And so the point is that you went from a Pharaoh that was that saw political interest in, 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 Jacob, in uh, Joseph and, and his family to a Pharaoh who these are literally the enemies because they have been the invaders. Um, and so that's kind of the background of, of, of Exodus and why you had this Pharaoh that knew not about Joseph, <laughs> you know, and have a whole other uh, other perspective on the Hebrew people. And note this, that you won't find this story in Egyptian history. They don't talk about, you know, their, um, they don't talk about the Red Sea. They don't talk about um, those types of defeats. <laughs> <laughs> where they have to fight against a God that is higher than their gods. And so um, if you're trying to look into antiquity and look into history to, to, to bridge the gap, you know, history is his story. And so they have, they have the power of the pen. And that's what happens with the power of the pen, the power of the microphone. That's what happens with the power of the dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, the person who has it has the, has the power. And so you're not going to necessarily find the story. But what you do see, um, when you look at the hieroglyphics, um, when you see the servants serving them, um, when you look at the timeline, try to transpose and say, oh, these are the, the Hebrews. These are the servants so that you understand they may not look like them, but um, 
we don't know what they look like. Um, they may have required them to, to change their appearance, to dress more like them so that they would be more comfortable. Um, that is basically what happens whenever someone takes over someone. I mean, we were required to straighten our hair, you know, and still today, um, our hairstyles as African Americans are considered illegal <laughs> and unlawful and unprofessional yes. in work environments when it grows out of our heads. <laughs> so, yes. and so, you know, we can't, we have to be open to understanding the text, understanding the culture, understanding antiquity in order to get the depths of the message. Um, if you are trying to, if your sole focus is to disprove the message, then you're going to miss out on the power of the message because again the person with the pen the person with the microphone the person with the dollar has the power and so that's where you have to lean to the holy spirit and allow the holy spirit to direct and guide you to give illumination pray over the word as you're reading it so that you can get understanding because we're going to show you some things along the way um, that you know you don't see when you're just reading it but when you are you spend time in the word, you spend time with God, God gives you an understanding of some information you got way back in class some 20 years ago. You're like, wait a second. You know, so sometimes I ask the question, so did the, did the basket flow upstream? Because, you know, things normally flow downstream. But in most environments, the wealthy live up high so that when they throw their waste in the water, it goes down to the poor communities. So when Moses' basket is dropped into, his ark is dropped into the water, does it flow down or is it going up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, the power of God. You know, God, the thing is, creation aligns with the power of God. And so we don't know. But the, but the reality is the wealthy usually live up high so that when they pour their waste in the water, they don't get the waste out of the water. They pour their waste in and it goes down to the poor areas. Am I correct? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. so that's what that's what the illumination, the time with God, praying for the Holy Spirit to give you understanding in the text will do for you. It will help you draw back to history. It will help you draw back to sociology and your anthropology classes. And you remember, oh, this is what happened. So this, wow, did God do that? He's able. Yeah, and Indeed, it, he's fun. able. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely able. And and God and, and and as we go through it, you know, God used when we talk about the miracles that God performed, you know, and 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 and, and some it wouldn't even say magic, <laughs> you know, they, some of the things that he even did with with Moses' uh, staff. But what God does, he will he will use nature. He will. He will rearrange. Cause it to align. That's yeah, right. That's, uh, absolutely. He he rearranges and he taps into nature itself, and he does something different. So the probability or the possibility of a basket flowing upstream, it's possible. <laughs> you know, it's, he's God. It's, yeah, because he's God, and and he uses what's around, what he's already created to to exemplify his power and authority over it. You know, because he's God. You know, so it's it's possible that that could have been the case. So don't try to look, I'm sorry, go ahead, Reverend Powell. Oh, and whether that's the case or not, because the Nile River, of course, is a rare river um, in, in, in the world uh, that flows uh, that, that flows upstream, that flows from south to north. Um, and, and so it flows toward upstream is the, the, uh, the, 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 the um, areas of power and the, the areas where the, um, where the, the food production uh, took place, the delta, uh, where the, uh, the, the, which was, the bread basket of the bread basket of the world. But the point is that, that, you know, God, yes, God works in everything. Yeah. And so, you know, God will work in, in, in something that reverses our natural expectations and God works in ways that are completely consistent with, uh, with, with, with the nature that God created. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, there's no separation between reality and God. God is yeah. reality. Yeah. And he align and he will cause creation to align with him. And so if you're trying to find an Egyptian history where this story falls, you're not going to find it. They're not talking about it in the way that the Hebrews are talking about it. And so because their gods didn't have victory over the Hebrews God. And so you're not going to find the Pharaoh being sucked up or closed in the Red Sea. You're not going to find it in their story. 
because they're not going to tell that story. And so you have to be, you have to trust the Holy Ghost. You got to trust the Holy Spirit and let him lead and guide you into understanding exactly what it is that God is doing, what God is saying and what God is revealing to you. So let's keep going. Just wanted to make sure you understood that because if you're looking, I spend time studying Egyptology and, and Metronetra and, and, and all of that. And it's not there. <laughs> it's not there. So if you're looking to make that connection in order to believe, then you're going, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. And to your point, the, the, you know, it's also that the, 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 scribes, if you will, that, that, that are compiling these stories, the people that are telling these stories, that the, the cultural um, um, stream, if you will, by which these stories are coming down, they're writing, they're telling their story. You know, again, there is no CNN, there is no Washington Post, you know, they, they, you know the whole concept of journalism didn't exist then. And so the, the Israelites, as they, as, as um, in the, again, the, the sixth, the um, um, eighth, the ninth, eighth, and seventh, centuries as they're compiling these stories and 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 codifying them into text they're doing it from their perspective and they're doing it from the they're, they're telling a theological story they're telling a a testimony story they're not telling a historical story and so the thing is to get past the propaganda aspects of it and the, because that's where we get into trouble uh, and 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 the 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 um historically biased aspects of it and to get to the truth of god which is how god reveals himself he god true loves us so much that he reveals uh his self and his truth in the crux uh of our human experience and 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 black folk, we do, you know, we are we are therefore liberated to do the same thing. And in fact, we need to do the same thing. Find God in our story, because he's all over the place. When we tell our story, we tell it from the per perspective of of our understanding of uh, our God consciousness and our self consciousness and and our historical and and political and economic and and, and above all spiritual needs um, in a way that that nourishes us and passes down the values, not just dates and times and facts, but the values to to the future generations, which is exactly what they did here. The, uh, so 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 family of Jacob grow into a people. The story, the, you know, remember the Genesis that that latter part of Genesis is all about getting these folk to Africa, where they become a people. Um, they have to get to Africa to become a civilized folk. And I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> and um, and so and and here it's sh it shifts from a people of the promise of of the promise of 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 uh, of, of um, land and conquest to a people um, who must exit who in order to get to that promise have to go through bondage and exodus is the narrative of their liberation from slavery which is why our ancestors so so connected with the story of exodus um arguably more so than any other story in the bible any other of the books of the bible arguably okay amen go amen. down moses <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> all right um so, oh, Joseph's name, by the way, um, and you've, you've alluded to that in the past, but it, it's, it's, it's worth reiterating here um, that uh, because in, the, in, this, in this text, um, that he, that the, now Joseph, verse six, now Joseph and all his brothers. At this point in the text, Joseph is separate from his brothers, uh, you know, for obvious reasons following the narrative, but his, his, he's, he is the facilitator, as we've talked about before, of God's promises. Um, Joseph's name means he will add or increase, and it conjures not only the power that he is able to to wield, if you will, um, that God um, insinuated him into, um, in order to save people in general of that region, and in order to save his people according to the promise. Um, but it also um, uh, it, it, it 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 indicates that while he's alive, is Egyptian power. That's that's uh, if you will the backbone. Obviously, God is the ultimate power, but here we see in this narrative, we see the, the, that the focus has changed from Egyptian power to God's power, um, and 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 how um, um, in, in 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 Joseph you have the, the 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 promise of God and God being faithful to His promise, whereas in in Jesus you have the presence of God, where 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 uh, Jesus not 
Joseph insinuates himself into the systems of power, but the cautionary tale is that it didn't change the power. <laughs> it didn't change the ruthlessness and wickedness of, of, of power, of, of, of ruthless power. Um, Jesus came against it and paid the price for it and uh, opened up the avenues for us to do likewise. Amen. Anything else on that? No, that's, that's okay. it. That's it. Just pray. Pray as you go through the scripture now. Okay, because it'll give you the illumination that you need to understand exactly what's going on and what you so history cannot be can't be the the foundation by which you vet the word of God. <laughs> it cannot be the foundation. That's Amen. what I, I was saying when I started this. It cannot be the foundation. The truth is in the story. Amen. We've been saying that since, since Genesis 1. That's right. <laughs> the truth is in the story. Verse, verse 8. Uh, then a new king who did not know about Joseph came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemy, fight against us and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians mm -hmm. came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor and brick and mortar and, you, and with all kinds of work in the fields. And all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. Wow. There's our brick without straw. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So basically, Joseph, um, there was no need for them anymore. And their fear, fear will make you um, abandon um, people who have been with you. Fear will make you see someone as a threat that's not necessarily a threat. Mm -hmm. And that is what this Pharaoh was faced with. He was concerned that they were going to outnumber them. So the land was filled with them. I think it was Genesis 47 where um, he says, so Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, the, the country of Goshen, and, and they grew and multiplied exceedingly, right? And so the story is letting us know that as prosperity was happening, as peace was happening, as, as stability was happening, they were having babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were doing what people do when there is peace and stability. <laughs> and so this Pharaoh, however, rose in, and he didn't read the annuals and he didn't see um, the value of, of, of them being so close to them. And I guess as you saw the other nations um, engage the other um, empires for, um, for power, they said, you know, these guys right here could easily turn to us and be, turn against us and become friends of our enemies. And, and then we will be taken into captivity. You know, often people are afraid for you to do to them what they've done to other people. <laughs> and that is what is happening right now in this text. Um, they, were, they were fruitful. They were being blessed. And this Pharaoh said, enough is enough. I don't want to live next door to you anymore. What do you do when your neighbors don't like you? <laughs> Right, you know, that Hatfields and the McCoys. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you do? You know, the War of the Roses. What do you do when, you know, the ones who are alongside of you are no longer, a, one wakes up one day and says, you are no longer a friend, you are a foe. And that is what has happened. And what appears to be the case is Israel, which often is the case, they don't have an army. Although God calls them an army, <laughs> they have yet to see themselves as an army and so they live peaceably next door um and and co and, and co-mingled with the egyptians but now times have changed and and you have a situation where uh you know this, we see it in our own country and uh, you know um throughout its history but uh, you know in particular uh now where when things but where um, economics, you know, military, all these things become unstable. 
you know, you lose a war, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that you never should have fought in the first place. Uh, you know, your, 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 your economy is getting, is, is destabilized. You got a pandemic and, and, and uh, people are acting crazy around the pandemic, won't, won't do what's necessary to, 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 to take care of this business, um, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Country gets a little crazy. You know, you get a crazy person as president, you get crazy Congress, you get crazy, you get crazy folk. You get folk fighting on planes and, <laughs> you know, um, and you just get, you, you, things become destabilized and, and, and both uh, politically, you know, economically and psychologically. And so you have this situation here where Egypt has come under attack. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and, and they've come under attack from their perspective by people who look like these Israelites who come from the same region as these Israelites. And so they view them a, as a threat um, and as a mortal threat. And, 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 and because the system of power remains what it is, they do what this country uh, does. You know, it, it seeks to oppress them, enslave them, disenfranchise them, um, you know, marginalize them to contain them and control them and keep them as a valuable labor force, at least for now, um, but to keep them, uh, just to, to, to um, remove them from the seat of power and keep them on the edges of survival in order to, uh, uh, to oppress them in order to control them and maintain your power. So, Reverend Bond, you have something you want to add? No, I, I'm, I'm listening and learning. No, it's, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, they all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> I was dealing with that this morning with a young woman who, who contacted me and said, help, because they're accusing me of something. You know, I care for someone and the elder white man can't, he can't remember who he, who did what to him. Mm -hmm. And we all look alike to them. I was like, oh boy, is that not the case? You know, that's why we tell our sons to pull up their pants so they don't, and to comb their hair so they don't look like they just got out of lock, weekend lockup. <laughs> when the police engages them because it's bad enough that they can't tell and they don't view us as valuable real estate. They don't view us as valuable human beings. They don't view us at, even when we have on a tie and a suit. So for us to walk around with our pants hanging low and our hair not combed, that um, just looks like weekend lockup, you know? And so, <laughs> and so when you said that, they look just like the, the sea people, you know? <laughs> Right. That's what that Pharaoh said. You know, are these people related? <laughs> and if they are, when they come together, we won't be able, we won't, we, it will be too late for us to yeah, fortify our borders. So let's just oppress them now. And then there'll be a message to whomever might be coming that don't mess with us. And so, <laughs> especially when we had just had to war to take back our power from them, <laughs> from those general people. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's, 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 I, I hope that, that our, that our audience can just see the tension um, in, in this, that these folks, you know, when they say in the first chapter that they came in at 70 and, you know, 70, of course, is the number of completion and, and, and all of it, but it's also, so it sort of serves that purpose um, to show their God's promise, but also to show their vulnerabilities, only 70 folks. You know, right. facing a you know facing a nation and facing what would become the contempt of a nation, and and so we see again the 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 the, the throughout the Bible, right? The the mustard seed, the you know see the multiplying fish, the you know et cetera et cetera. That mm -hmm. God sides with the small people. <laughs> he sides with the outcasts. He sides the with the, the underdogs. Yeah. He, you know, he, he's and, and particularly those who see themselves as underdogs um, and have been conditioned to see themselves. And and he sides with them. And out of small things, out of small beginnings, God brings um, awesome things. And uh, glory, glory be to God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. One little so, side. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, go on. What did you say? Oh, just one little side. Uh, mm -hmm. The store cities. Um, of, of where in, in uh, where's that in, in chapter in verse 11 um, and they built the slave the slaves built the Pithom and Ramses the store cities for Pharaoh which were basically royal storehouse cities um, that served the, to, to provide you know right because you know when folk get hungry the rich stay full <laughs> well and this is what's funny they take Joseph's methodology oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they forget Joseph 
<laughs> you know, and so he's the store city. That, that was Joseph's concept. That was the idea Joseph brought to the table. And so here there, he's utilizing what was taught, but he doesn't want now for the person who taught it to be at the table. And we see that often mm -hmm. as well. You know, that's why you get stuff in writing, people. <laughs> Granted, Joseph wasn't in a position to do that. But, you know, whenever you you have an issue, you know, stop having conversations. Stop chit-chatting about it. Put it in writing because now it's written. And when people say, I don't remember, I don't recall, or I never said that, or, oh, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't get it. <laughs> you know, you you have it in writing um, so that you can, you can verify. You have a written record. And so this man is basic. This Pharaoh is utilizing Joseph's wisdom and ingenuity, the, the wisdom of God, um, without, um, what is it called, royalties, paying royalties to <laughs> the people who, who we got it from. And that we see that in our music. We see that throughout history. You know, so many things we give credit to the European nations, which Egypt and the African nations were the first creators of. You know, even beer people <laughs> was in Egypt. It wasn't wasn't Germany. <laughs> so you know, so it's just a beer came out of Egypt. <laughs> you know what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just I just took something out because I wanted to connect the fact that we all can give credit to so many other nations. You know, and it's not that's not the case. Um, and so they just, but the, again, the person, it's his story. And history is his story. The person with the pen, the person with the dollar, the person with the microphone, they have the power. And they can tell you whatever story they want to tell you. And that is exactly what is happening right now. This Pharaoh is saying, you know what? We're going to do this and we're going to do that. And now that the Israelites have no participation in this, this portion of saving a nation. They have no participation in this portion of the wisdom and, and the strategy of, of developing and saving this, this nation and, and providing for the people of Egypt and the world. And so um, I think it's just interesting that, you know, he's, he forgot Joseph, but he didn't forget Joseph's um, methodology. Yeah, even the slave system that was instituted came out of Joseph uh, in response to the, to, the, to, the, to the famine. And of course, you know, they took it and distorted it and turned it against them. So yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, just a, a couple of quick things. Uh, uh, the the uh, first of all, just an aside, uh, because you see this a lot in culture. Um, the the Great Pyramids and all that were not built by Hebrew slaves. First of all, that's not in the Bible. The Bible didn't say they built the pyramids. In fact, the pyramids were built before there was a Bible. Uh, it was they were they, 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 the the uh, the Bible says they built the storehouses of the store cities of Ramses. Period. Okay, so let's let's just put that aside. If you wanna, there are lots of validation for that, but you could just simply go to the Museum of, of uh, Natural History, and there's a panel right there. Thank the Lord that that indicates that point. Um, the 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 other thing um, was that um, the, uh, um, the 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 uh, again the greater the oppression, the the greater the oppression against the Hebrews, the stronger they got. The greater the oppression, the more they multiply. Sure. The greater the oppression, the more they 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 the more power they acquire, and the more fear than they amassed in the eyes of those who would seek to oppress them. And yes, they had no participation except one thing: their labor. And so, you know, we need to also, as we understand our own Exodus <laughs> reality in this country, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. We were not enslaved. Please stop telling your children that they were enslaved. We were enslaved because we were black. We were enslaved because we were valuable. Mm -hmm. We were enslaved because what we brought to the table, to the table had yeah. such value that they that they needed it mm -hmm. to build this nation. They needed it for that, and they still need it, but they didn't want to pay for it. That's right. And so the system, and so the system of slavery that's codified in the Constitution. Uh, you know, and, and all of that codified in the law, ratified in the Supreme Courts, and the very structure and DNA of this country is not because we black, it's because we're valuable. It's because of what we bring to the table. And if we can learn anything from the Hebrews um, in this uh, aspect of their history, I think that's a really important lesson, especially in how we tell it to our children. Absolutely.
Yeah, it's and it's 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 all God and you know God inspired. God, we are a chosen people, you know. And when you're a chosen person, and when you're a chosen people, God gives you what you need. He will give you creativity. He will give you the value of of development. You know, look what he did for Joseph. Joseph didn't grow up knowing how to build <laughs> these things. You know, it was you know it, it was God inspired. You know, working with bronze, working with gold, working with brick. You know, and, and all of those things, all of that came from God. And and we're no different today than back then. You know, God still he's he's still showing his value through us as a people today, you know? And uh, so it, it, there wouldn't be a, 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 an Egypt without the Hebrews, you know? <laughs> there wouldn't be a, 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 a pre-Egypt without, um, or pre-pyramid with, or, or pyramids without uh, a, a pre-people, you know, that God chose from the very beginning uh, to, to create and to, to establish things in the earth. So, um, you know, the, the value of a person, you know, it, it all comes from God, you know, the value of who we are, it, it, it all stems from God. Amen. Amen. Verse 15. Yes. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were uh, Shifra and Pua, when you help the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, if it is a boy, kill them, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before midwives arrive. <laughs> so God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Again now, and, and remember now, the Nile, it flows north. So north is downstream. Mm -hmm. Okay, so north is downstream. So he wants to not only throw them into the, to the Nile, but throw them into the Nile so that they go into the sea. <laughs> And they're utterly destroyed. But isn't it amazing that um, he honored the Hebrew um, tradition? You know, um, and still today in the Middle East, you have where um, mid they have midwives and Jewish midwives help mid Jewish midwives, Muslim midwives help Jewish um, mothers give birth and Christian midwives help Christian mothers give birth. And so it's great to know that um, in all of this, Pharaoh in his, his wickedness, still did not, um, he wasn't as wicked as Hitler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. had he put and mandated that Egyptian midwives do it, then they most certainly would have carried out the, the instructions to the full extent. But because they were Jewish midwives and they knew they had a stake, this was their brother. They were their brother's keeper, their sister's keeper, if you will. And so they, they, they wanted to, to be faithful to the God that they served. And they did not fulfill his his um, his mandate, his instruction as Pharaoh. I think I think of the African women when we do our medical clinics in Ghana and other places where they give birth and then in four hours they got the baby on their back and they're walking home. <laughs> no, no epidermal, no nothing. They, they they we don't hear them screaming. We don't write. It's just a couple of uh -huh and a plop out and so <laughs> we've seen it right oh, yeah. every year we give birth to a couple babies in our clinics and so you know it is nothing like we see in american hospitals nothing like we see um on television and in movies and so i when she said when i read that i could say so oh yeah i bet they were <laughs> and we see it time and time again i'm like she's not did y'all give her something? No, no epidural, no, no medicine. No, she's doing this straight, no chaser guys. And she's popped the baby out. And then a couple hours later, she's restored and she goes and she walks back to her village with her baby. And we're in the hospital for how many days? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Our mom's got to come and live with us. We got to have help. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman walking back to her village after giving birth. And so 
when she's when I read that, I said, I bet they were as strong. But of course, she is um she's telling the truth, but she's not, but she's not telling all of the truth. Um, she's saying that they are strong, and before we can do anything, it's already done. And so, um, and I believe that to be true, but also I think she believed, I believe the midwives understood the importance of keeping their legacy alive, their people alive, you know, and that's something that we as African Americans, we as the Western civilization, we, we, we don't care about um, anyone else. We don't care about our, our legacy or our, our, our lineage or where we come from, the motherland or whatever a country or nation you, your, your family has come from. We only care about our foreign no more. And so um, these midwives were committed to, to God and the, the, the holy fear, the, the, the reverence of God is, um, is a good thing to have. Um, it'll keep you alive. It'll keep you on the right track. It will most certainly keep you in his will. And these midwives were blessed and because they, they feared God over Pharaoh. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's um, this, again, fear, um, fear, fear radicalizes wickedness. Um, we, again, we see that in our own country. Um, here you have fear that, that leads this Pharaoh to do something that's utterly insane when you think about it. <laughs> I mean, it's insane as, a, as a policy, as, as national policy is insane on the face of it to kill all the, all the men, all the boys of your labor force. <laughs> that's building your cities. That's dumb. <laughs> right? I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy, you know, and we see that like, again, and without going into the, all, you know, the details, y'all see it, y'all, when you, when you watch the news, but that, that's where we are as a country, and, so, and so in the midst of this genocide, um, you have, I, I love Sif, uh, Shifra and Pua, uh, by the way, named, which makes them significant as women, uh, because women, you know, again, when they're named, that gives them, uh, that means they, they have this, an extra significance in the context of patriarchal uh, uh, writers of scripture. And so um, the, the fact that they, that faced with this situation, um, they did what we've done throughout our history here. They used whatever they had to, to resist the oppression that they faced every day. Women, men, that, you know, that, but particularly in this case, the women, the midwives, those who had the responsibility of birthing the future, of, of bringing forth, facilitating the birth of their future, the birth of the completion of God's promise. They, 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 I, I love the, I love the way the guile, when they came to them, you know, where, where Pharaoh orders them to kill these boys, and they just basically refuse the order. They don't say it wisely <laughs> they just don't do it just like uh you know women in the kitchen uh, and servants in the house uh back in the plantation days would would grind glass and masses food and you know people out in the plantations would do slowdowns and and every everything at their disposal to resist the oppression that they were confronted with and so i love the fact that with that well why you have disobeyed my order in other words I, i'm about to kill you and they right. said, "Well, no, no, no. You know, see these these Hebrews. And they, they they play about they play <laughs> upon the the Egyptians' own um, biases and and That's prejudice. Right. And says, so well, you know, these Hebrew women, they're not like normal women. You know, they're not like like nice white suburban women. You know, these women, they're vigorous. You know, when they have birth, they divide baby just pop out. You know, before the midwives can even get there. They walk <laughs> off. They walk <laughs> off. But they do. Yeah. Yeah. There the it is. They swim. You know, Hallelujah. All that sun they get." <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I just think that's just such a beautiful um, how faith, when, the, when, when rubber hits the road, what I love about scriptures like this is how people in, in, with faith, how, how they demonstrate how people of faith operate in the real world confronting the systems of wickedness that we confront every day. Mm -hmm. They use, again, whatever was at their disposal, their, their intelligence, their guile, whatever it was with a focus on, we got to save these babies. That's the bottom line. We got to save these boys. We got to save our people. Um, and, and, and whatever's necessary, um, prayerfully, uh, whatever's necessary, they got it done. And so uh, I just, I, that part I just, I just absolutely love. Um, and because of, of the Shifras and Puas um, and, 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 and Mary McLeods and Fannie Lou's and, 
and uh, Harriet's and, and, and Sojourners and, and mamas and grandmamas and big mamas and aunties and, and uh, throughout our history, because of them, um, we were able to survive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, we often, um, when you're fighting the devil, you're not supposed to give him your battle plan. You know, and we we will lie to the person who came to help us and tell the devil the truth. <laughs> you know, and, and 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 then say, you know, I don't want to be in trouble with God. But no, these women said, we're not doing that. You know, we're not doing that. And and it wasn't um, if I perished, I perish. It was a uh, as you you stated, Reverend Powell that we're going to play on your biases. We're going to play on your prejudice. We're going to play, play, on your, play on your ignorance. And we're going to say, they're so different. <laughs> they're not like, they're, they're beast. <laughs> and so, but they, they made sure that the boys survive. And, and when, you, when you protect the important things of God, when you protect the assignment of God, God blesses you. What we have in the body of Christ is no one's willing to protect the assignment. That's what we have. We, we have people who just, you know, oh, this is what it says. So this is what I have to do. No, you got to protect the assignment. You got this. We talked about, you know, can the devil steal someone's destiny? And I said, no, not unless you let him. <laughs> you got to fight back. <laughs> we don't want to fight. And these women figured out how to fight back as many of our ancestors did, how to fight back. And so if you you want to see, and that's why many of us have gotten our breakthroughs. We've not seen the manifestation of the things we desire in our lives is because we won't fight back. We got to fight back. And these women said, I'm not going to do what you said, even though I am to render unto Caesar the things of Caesar. <laughs> Those babies are not Caesar's, you know? <laughs> so, and you have to know this within your knower. You got to know this within your spirit. That's why it's so important to spend time with the Holy Spirit, to spend time in the presence of God so that you know the strategy of God on how to defeat your enemies. And it says that the Lord was kind to these midwives and the people increased in number because of them, increased in number, and the Lord gave the midwives their own families. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So as they're giving birth to all these beautiful babies, then the Lord says, and I'm going to give you your family too for protecting what you do for others. God makes happen for you. So you protect someone else's baby. God's going to make sure your baby's protected. You, you feed someone else's kids. God's going to make sure your kid is fed. Then, you know, you gotta, it's, it's seed time and harvest. It's not just always money. And so this is what you're seeing. These women have sown a seed of faithfulness. They've sown a seed of protection. And now God is giving them a harvest and the entire nation a harvest. But that's what we do. When you are anointed and appointed by God, when you are committed to the assignment of God, the more the, they press on you, the more you, you create, the more oppression you endure, the more God births out of you. And so <laughs> if the enemy only knew that when he stretches you, God blesses you. <laughs> if he only knew that. <laughs> But often we get weary in that moment. We get weary in the delay. We get weary and, you know, we, we give up. And so it's like the, the ten, 10 virgins and the oil in the lamp. You know, five had enough oil and five had to go back and get oil. And when they came, because the bridegroom delayed, when they came back, he was gone and the door was closed and they didn't have access. And so we have to be prepared. We must be ready. You know, and, and we can't lean on someone else's faith. We can't lean on someone else's words. We have to know him for ourselves. We have to have that, that, that those deep roots in our relationship um, with the Lord ourselves so that we can know the strategy because it, apparently some of these girls spent more time in his presence and they knew to have more oil where the other ones didn't come with the, the necessary amount in case there was a delay. And because the bridegroom delayed, they were left out while going to buy more oil. And so it's important for us to, um, to be prepared. Um, God gives speed to what's prepared. He just doesn't give speed, just doesn't accelerate. 
He gives it to what has been prepared. So let's be prepared. Get in position for possession. That's the end of chapter one. That's good. Hallelujah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Well, if you would like to know our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we invite you to become a part of the army of the Lord. <laughs> you know, you may not feel like you're a soldier, but you are. And like these two women midwives were, they were soldiers. Pharaoh called them midwives. The community called them midwives, but they were lieutenants and generals. <laughs> That's right, leading an army, you know. And so if you want to become a part of the army of the Lord and you want to, to, to be saved today, then we invite you to please repeat this prayer after me. And, and the, because the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And so I know that there's lots of religions and people tell you there's many ways to God, but there's, there's only one way to the most high God. So if you want to have access to him, the creator of heaven and earth, I invite you to please repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you've forgiven me of my sin. And I thank you for my new beginning. I thank you, Father, that my name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm a part of the household of God. I thank you that when you come back, you're coming back for me, and there's a crown laid up for me. I thank you, God, that in spite of what has gone on in my past, it's going to all work together for the good. I trust you, I honor you, and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer today, you are saved today. We all fall short of his glory. We all make mistakes. Nobody in church is perfect. And that's one of the tricks of the enemy. He tries to make you look at us and say, they're not perfect. Look at them. They're hypocrites. We're all making mistakes. We all fall short of his glory. What we seek to do is just repent of our sin and get back on the road with him. We try not to get tripped up on minor and stupid stuff or the same stuff over and over again. But the enemy is always coming. But just like he gave these two midwives strategy. God will give you strategy. And the more that the enemy presses against you, because the, the battles that you're in reveal the level of mantle that's upon your life, the level, of, the level of calling that's on your life. So if you feel like you're just constantly being, you know, come on, then that's, that's an indicator that there's something great on the inside of you. There's something great that's supposed to come through your bloodline and the enemy is trying to cut it off before it happens. And so get into the presence of the Lord. Join us in Bible study, read the word of God, and then get connected to a Bible-believing church. We invite you to go to newfaith.org. That's newfaith.org and become a member of this army of God. And you'll, become a, you'll be a new members class. You'll have access to Sunday school. You'll be a part of our prayer groups and everything that we do, the choirs, the ushers, everything, you'll have options. And that's what's so great. We just want you saved and we want you in the fellowship. And so if you want to be a part of New Faith, just visit newfaith.org. We love you. And know this, what you pray today, that deal is sealed by the blood of Jesus. I know it seems simple. And I know you said, if that's it, then, you know, are you sure I don't feel different? Oh, you will start to feel different as you get to know him. You'll start to feel different as you get connected to him. And don't let anyone tell you that there's some type of formality that you have to do to talk to God. Just talk to him like you talk to your friends. And then as you grow in him, he'll show you exactly how he wants you to deal with him. And you can't go wrong with God. That's all I can tell you. I'm glad I found him early. <laughs> glad he called me early. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I submitted to him early. You know, he wasn't lost. I was, let me get that clear. But I'm glad that, you know, as I was searching um, and as I was looking here and there, because as we started, I said, I started, I studied Egyptology. I was in the Metro Metro. I was trying to, to get an understanding, trying to connect the dots. And I wanted the truth and I wanted the power and I wanted the understanding. And what I know is, Jesus is real. And the pharaohs, the people in Egypt don't even worship them anymore. Huh? <laughs> I think I can close my case right there. And so in all of your getting, get understanding. We love you and we'll see you next week, Wednesday. God bless you and be safe. Awesome.